So last night I fixed my microphone and this microphone I've been trying to fix this microphone for the past five months. So if you take a look at this CQ, you will see that that yeah, I did some something right here, which was very simple. Even though it took me a lot of time to fix, but without my multimeter, I would not have been able to fix this microphone. And I always say, you need to know how to use your multimeter completely, right? I've talked about all the ranges, how you can use all the ranges on your multimeter. And uh, I think that most of you will be wondering, why do I have to use all the ranges on your multimeter, especially the resistance section? So what exactly did I do? And was it the first time for me to use a multimeter while working on that microphone circuit? Nope. Since the day that the microphone got bad, because I got a microphone, use it just like three times and it got bad. Since the day that the microphone got bad, I used my multimeter all the times. I've checked it a couple of times. Last night, I decided that, okay, this microphone circuit is very simple. Why is it so hard for me to work on this? I see all the components. I know each component on that PC. If I sit and say, okay, I cannot work on this circuit, then I'm no technician. I don't know anything about electronics. That's what I said to myself yesterday. The, the, the PCB is very simple. And I know very well that the capsule of the microphone is working quite well, right? So that's why I decided that, okay, I need to take some time at night and work on the PCB. So once I open that PCB, I put the PCB right in front of me. Look at the PCB, I see the components, see the, the resistors. And I noticed something that I haven't checked all this while that I've been checking the PCB. So there is one thing that I found in the PCB and that was the main problem. I changed two components. I'm going to talk about that. But the first component, I found that the resistor on that PCB was not open. And with the hope of using my multimeter, using the ranges on my multimeter, I found out that there is one resistor on that PCB that was not working. And don't think that that resistor that I'm talking about, that you can easily know if the resistor is okay or not, or maybe you can just hold your multimeter and check that resistor. That resistor was a high value resistor, a 6 mega ohm resistor. That's insane, right? So these type of resistors are very hard to know if they're okay or not. And most of you, you can check, even if it's okay, and you will say it's not okay. That's because setting your multimeter to that continuity test mode, if you test the resistor, it's not going to give any reading. And a lot of resistors in the in the sound circuit, if you test them, they're not going to read in the continuity test mode, and you might remove them thinking that they're not okay. They're not supposed to read because it's a high-value resistor. It's not even a kilo-ohm resistor. It's a mega-ohm resistor, right? So if you set it to 200 ohm, it's not going to read. Set it to 20 kilo ohm range, it's not going to read. 200 kilo ohm range, it's not going to read. So we have a 2 mega ohm uh, range in our multimeter. And if you use the 2 mega ohm range in your multimeter to test the 6 mega ohm resistor, it's still not going to read. Wow, crazy, right? Okay, so what I did, all I did, I noticed that that resistor, because it, it had a number, the resistor had a number written on it. What I did, I just had to take the number, search it online. So this resistor, what's the value of this resistor? This is the number. It shows that it's a 6 mega ohm resistor. So I know that the 6 mega ohm doesn't have to read in the 2 mega ohm range. Between the 2 mega ohm range to 200 mega ohm, that's when the, your, your multimeter can be able to detect and read that 6 mega ohm resistor, right? So I tested and it did not give a reading, which means that starting from the 200 mega ohm to the continuity test range, that resistor wasn't reading. I was like, wow, so this is all that I've been trying to figure out all this while. And the reason why it took me a long time to figure this out was because I never used all these ranges. I never looked detailly into the resistors to know their value. Even though I always talk about this in my video saying it's very important, but there are some things that I talk about in the video and I don't just have time. And I don't just have time to always do that. But it's very important to know because I see through a couple of blocks, the, the, the microphone is quite expensive, right? So because I noticed and know exactly which component was bad in the PCB, there is one capacitor. I don't know the type of capacitor that I removed the first time that I opened the circuit, I removed the capacitor. I put it somewhere, I check and I do not see the capacitor. So I need to check that specific capacitor because it's the one that is transmitting the sound signal 
in the into the platform, right? So I do not know where I can get that that, that capacitor, and I do not know the exact capacitor. So what I did, I just had to look for a circuit then because I used to create amplifiers back then, so I know the type of capacitors that can work well when it comes to sound circuit, right? So I look at them, yeah, I remove a sound a, a, a capacitor right there, then I mount that capacitor, and what was left was the resistor. Getting a six mega ohm resistor is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So I look at circuits, these PCBs right here. I look at the, the PCBs and I found a two mega ohm resistor. I find it using my multimeter, using a multimeter test and find it. That's it. Use your multimeter in the correct range. If you are finding a mega ohm resistor, like a six mega ohm resistor, you have to set your multimeter to 200 mega ohm range right so i set it to 200 mega ohm range i test then i found a two mega ohm resistor and also that two mega ohm resistor was too small so the microphone itself takes in 48 volt but the capsule should be taking like 30 something volt right so that resistor two mega ohm was too small because the one that was supposed to be there was six mega ohm so what i did i i checked i looked for six and i couldn't find any uh, I could not find any uh, high mega ohm resistor. So what I found was one mega ohm resistor. So I had to connect the resistors in series to make them three mega ohm, just to see if that would work, just to manage it, right? So I connect them in series, then yeah, I, I placed it as you can see right there. And the mic work. Hi everyone, so in this video, we will talk about the circuits that are related to sound problem. In mm -hmm. I actually work. I cannot say I cannot say the quality is best because first the resistor that I put right here, they are not the same. Three mega ohm resistor is lacking. Then the capacitor that I put, I don't even know. It's not even the type that I remove I can remember that well. It's not even the type, but the mic works, and I'm so happy about that. So we do have uh, uh, all the things that we need to be able to trouble should have no bad components in the circuit but we just have to make use of the things we do have uh, tools like our multimeter that we can use to do deep troubleshooting testing components but we are lacking that self-confident that if it really take time to do this check this big time look at our multimeter setting the correct range look, take a deep look at a mobile pcb or any electronic pcb you can be able to find a fault to your component because if not for that knowledge, I wouldn't have suspected that resistor. There were other resistors in the mobile PCB that were not reading. Back then when I tested the resistors, I tested they were not reading. And because I know very well that there are high value resistors that needs to be set, needs your multimeter to be set in a specific range before you can read, I did not remove any of them. So yesterday I had to set the multimeter changing the range, testing the resistors, until I found this resistor that is not reading on any range. And when I did that, everything was okay. And that's it, just like that and very smooth. Well, I am saying it's my right there. You can subscribe to my channel or follow me if in case you are watching this on TikTok. So check my course on the link on my bio. I have a mobile repairing course where you can learn mobile repairing starting from the basics to the professional level of troubleshooting mobile phone calls.